hear him. John Boyamita now, formerly of MLB Network, still with NFL Network, does a great job. He can talk everything sports with Chris Rose. Chris, welcome in. Joe Spadoni, Joe Shasky, Morning Rose. How are you doing this morning, man? Hello, Joes. How are you guys? <laughs> oh, we well. We are just breaking down what I think everyone's trying to break down right now. This Shohei Otani thing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> where do we want to start here? Uh, <laughs> what was your reaction to the Dodgers firing Shohei Otani's interpreter amid allegation of massive theft? Uh, it was, uh, I believe what I retweeted was, uh, holy crap, but crap was replaced by another four letter word of similar meaning. Um, here's what I would say guys is that I think the people that are saying, well, he's a fall guy, uh, the EPA is a fall guy for Shohei Otani. It's way too early to say anything like that. And it's also not nothing. So here's what has to happen in my opinion, and I'm sure it won't. Major League Baseball has to have a press conference, and it won't happen because Rob Manfred is not comfortable speaking in front of the media. It's just not that he doesn't like it. He doesn't like to they, – they really did him a disservice when they gave him the job. They should have given him PR classes. And no joke. Like, he needs to be in front of a camera today. And I don't care if it's from Seoul, South Korea. I don't care if it's from – New. I, I don't care. He has to get in front of it because it is the – we're talking about the face of the sport and a global sporting icon whose name has now been attached to a federal investigation over illegal bookmaking. And if, he, if Rob Manfred in baseball wants to come out and say, hey, listen, guys, he is in the clear. We have done an investigation. There's not going to be any issues with him. If there is new information that comes out and we have to readjust on the fly, we will do it. But at this point, here's why Shohei is in the clear. And this is what we know. Like, you have to get ahead of this. And I don't, I, I mean, baseball for years has always just curled into a ball, run and hid, and hoped that everybody would move on to the next story. But if you notice, all of the morning shows that are on your television or that stream out there, nobody mentioned a word about game one of the regular season yesterday. No, they couldn't care. But what did everybody talk about today? Shohei Otani. So if you don't get ahead of this, you're doing a huge disservice to your sport, to him, and what lies ahead. Well, you see all of the leagues, the NBA, the NFL, golf. I mean, you see them all, and now Major League Baseball. They're all in bed with every single gambling company that's out there, DraftKings, MGM, I mean, there's a million different ones, right? Like, I guess I guess where I come down on this, there has to be some regulation, and you saw this in the NFL where there was a self-reporting by, I believe, DraftKings on all these players, because there has to be integrity for the consumers and for the other gamblers out there that everything's on the up and up. I guess... I just don't trust MLB to be the arbiter in this situation when Shohei is clearly important to their bottom line. Well, yes, and uh, I would I would agree with you. Um, but at the very least, the sport has to make a comment, right? Yes, no I, doubt. I just read I just read that the Do that Dodgers PR didn't let anybody didn't let Shohei talk to the media, which I get right in in the last. Less than 24 hours, his world has been turned upside down. So I get it. And, you know, you, you you don't want to be working with a brand new interpreter, and all of a sudden you're facing questions about legality. Like I understand why they wouldn't let him do it, but the league has to take a stance now. Now, whether or not you trust it, like that, I think it gets to a much bigger issue. Like, What's can that? we trust any league? Which is, can we trust any league when it comes to all this stuff? And protecting their stars and things of that nature and guys who who affect the bottom line the most. Like, of course, no league. The NFL didn't want to suspend Tom Brady four games for Dick Lightgate, right? I mean, he was one of their biggest stars. Now, you might argue that the NFL is Teflon and, and they can go on with whomever is the quarterback of the Patriots, right? Like, I, that I can understand. But there's not a league in the world that's going to want to go after certain people. I mean, you can go back to the Jordan 
stuff 30 years ago in the NBA and that story if you want to, right? Like, it's it was uncomfortable to live through then, and I hope that this doesn't blow up into that sort of thing. Well, that's what I was going to ask. We're talking to Chris Rose, John Boy Media, NFL Network, Battle Bots, baby. I love me some Battle Bots. Um, no one of the best. Thanks, thank you. Um, that's what I wanted to get out here. Does this story potentially, if Rob Manfred and Major League Baseball doesn't jump on top of this, does this have the potential to rise up to Barry Bonds, the steroid era, all that? Because Shasky and I were talking about we're in San Francisco right now. That was a massive. It was took over sports for a long time. Yeah, guys going to trial. He had. And Roger Clemens, all these guys. We had Rafael Palmero, everyone. Does this one story with one man and Shohei Otani, who was that big, have a chance to rival that? Well, anytime you're talking about a federal investigation, then of course it can. I mean, how can it not? You know, it's out of your hands as a sports league when something is in now the court system. And part of the reason that the steroid scandal got as big as it did was because Bonds and Giambi had to go testify, mm. right? I mean, that's what made it so enormous, and that's where baseball ended up looking its poorest, was because they were like, oh, what's well, just our little problem and our dirty little seat. Well, no, no, no. That's not the way it got. And at the end of the day, when you have guys who are hitting home runs and setting records for a living sitting and giving testimony, well, that becomes an issue. And baseball is just sitting there probably praying that Shohei Otani's name isn't on a witness list, Oof. right? I mean, that's, that's the problem here is if they don't – yes, it's hard to take baseball's word by saying, well, he's not part of an investigation. That's why Rob Manfred needs to answer questions from reporters. It can't just be a one-line throwaway at the end of a story. There's got to be – tell us why. Tell us why you're comfortable with this. Man, and it's overshadowing so many different things in baseball that are going on. I mean, there's so many young superstars. The league of the players union, excuse me, is basically getting rid of the person who represents them. There's this anti-Boris kind of um, consequence that has happened with all of these free agents. Like, there's a lot of things going on. I feel like the game's in a great place in terms of actually watching it, the aesthetics of, of basing it all. And it's all overshadowed by this right now. I mean, you just brought it up. We, we didn't even talk about it. Yamamoto got lit up today. And we're not even going to talk about it. It's, it is, it, this is bad. And I'm a huge, but you're a huge baseball. Like, this is really bad for where the sport's at right now. Yep. I mean, I, I love Shohei Otani. I love what he has brought to the game. I try not to miss at bats. I love watching him pitch. Now I'm not like goo goo gaga like Ben Verlander over him, but uh, you know, like that's where I am. I, I really enjoy him a ton. And I don't want to see like I, I just want to be able to enjoy his baseball. I want to see if he can be able to do it with the new team in Southern California. Like I want all. I don't want to talk about this stuff, but. Here we are, and sometimes you got to put your big boy and big girl pants on. And it's the number one issue with, for me with Major League Baseball is that whenever there's a hurdle they have to jump over, they would rather turn around and not participate in the race than have to go do it because they don't like to face big issues. Like if they were in a relationship with somebody, they would be the one that never talks in therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, like they just don't want to deal with stuff. Chris Rose with us on the Morning Rose. Joe Spadoni in for Bonte Hill alongside Joe Shasky. And, I'll, and we'll get into some of the actual baseball because the Giants, I think there's a lot of optimism yep. about them this season. But real quick, this whole Shohei thing, um, I'm an Oakland A's fan, uh, Chris. So I just can't help but laugh about the potential of the A's moving to the betting capital <laughs> of the world while their face of the league is potentially under investigation, potentially, not yet, he's not under, but potentially under investigation for wiring four and a half million dollars illegally, the sports game. Like, just, I'm laughing a little bit at Rob Manfred in this whole situation. I am. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a kick out of it because you're right. The guy, he, he can't do public speaking well. Whenever he speaks about the A's, he's speaking down on them. He's speaking badly about the fans. So, yeah, so... Will he talk about it? Probably not. But there is a part of me as an A's fan 
that is laughing at this entire scenario, potentially blowing up in his face. Yeah, I mean, listen, to me, it's two different things. And I have a ton of sympathy for fans like yourself because I, I you know, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. We, I had a team ripped away um, in the mid-90s, and it sucks, and it's terrible. And I think probably with Oakland, it's even a little bit worse because it's been such a slow drip yeah. over the last decade. You know, like, do we have a stadium? Are we building one on the water? We've got plans. We don't have plans. Now there's issues with the politicians. Oh, by the way, we're moving to Vegas. Now Vegas' mayor doesn't want us. They want, she really believes that, you know, they, they want to stay in Oak. Like, it's crazy what, you know, but, I'm not going to sit here and root for the greatest talent we've ever seen in the sport wow, yeah. to have a downfall because of that. I think you have to, I don't think that's healthy. I'm not telling you how to think, but I think you have to be able to separate the two. Like, I, I'm sorry. I can't, I'll be crushed if something major happens with Shohei Otani. I, I really will. I just, I can't even think about it and it, it without it making me sick. Understand. No, totally. We are in a market, though, and I've talked to a lot of Giants fans. They would not be too unhappy about it. I get it, face of the league, but that guy is signing for that much money when you were trying to get him over here. There's for Giants fans anyways, and maybe that's a unique scenario, uh, Chris. And I get it. He's the face of the league. I think he's the greatest player that I've ever seen just at his peak. Um, I've watched Mike Trout. I watched Barry Bonds. Watched a lot. I didn't watch Millie Mays, so I get that. Um, but there is a little bit of a uh, schadenfreude happening with a lot of Giants fans with this. Um, but talking about the Giants, I mean, it feels like in the last week they got, they got Matt Chapman, they've got Blake Snell now, they signed Jorge uh, Soler, Jung-Hoo Lee. Giants, they got action in the West? Yeah, I mean, I think what they've done is that they've put themselves in a really, really good position to fight for a wild card. In my opinion, listen, I, I just think the Dodgers over a six month span are so much better than anybody else in that division. And that's not a shot at that. I do. I think Arizona, the Giants and San Diego could all be very much in, in really good wild card contention. And I think that, listen, the, the proof is that's all you need to be. Uh, look at the last two representatives for the National League in the World Series, right? The 84 win Diamondbacks and what the year before that, the Phillies, I think had 87 wins. So it's not about winning 105 ball games. Hell, you guys learned that a couple of years ago when you won 107 in the regular season and, and didn't make it out of the divisional round. It's about setting yourself up, being healthy and being a viable contender once October starts. And I think all these moves that have happened for whatever reasons, for Matt Chapman getting there for 54 million and Blake Snell getting there for 62, that Farhan has done a remarkable job taking advantage of whatever we've seen in this market to add really good baseball players. And I think it's awesome for Giants fans. I know you've wanted that big ticket item the last several years, and that hasn't worked out. But I do think with, between that and the addition of Bob Melvin, you guys are, are sitting in a really, really good spot. And that's all you can ask for heading into the season, in my opinion. For those that maybe don't know, how good is Blake Snell? Well, I, I find him fascinating. I do think part of the reason that he was available for this small a contract, and I'm using a little bunny rabbit quote here on $62 million, was because his four years in between his two Cy Young seasons were all over the place. I don't think he pitched more than 130 innings at any of those four years. There were times where the sixth inning was a rumor to him, and so I think it was hard to see. But when you're talking about just basic stuff out of a starter, there are five guys that are better than him in terms of just quality stuff when he's out of the, out there on the mound. And I think that he's going to really benefit being around Lo, uh, Logan Webb. You know, a guy who has to pitch his ass off every five days to give you what he's got, you know, because he doesn't throw 97. So uh, I think that's going to be a great one-two punch. And by the way, Logan just joined us. He's going to be a regular on the Chris Rose rotation. Oh. Yeah, so you'll hear him every, you know, four, five, six weeks on the show. We'll talk all things Giants, what's going on, what's going on in his life. It's, uh, he's been a great guest in recent years, and so we decided to make him kind of a family member. We're really looking forward to that. 
Love Logan Webb. Big Raider guy too, Chris. Uh, yes, I'm, 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 yeah, big Raider guy. Big Kings guy. Kings playing well yes, out in Sacramento. So uh, should be uh, looking forward to that. Chris Rose, John Boy Media, NFL Network, amongst other things. BattleBots. God, I love me some BattleBots. Real quick, Texas Rangers. They won the World Series. Keep an eye on Bruce Bochy. Obviously, three-time World Series champion with the San Francisco Giants. We love Boch. What's going on with the Texas Rangers this year? Are, are we going to expect anything from DeGrom? Um, Scherzer, like, this is the defending champs, but I feel like they're getting mm-hmm. slept on. Well, in part because they didn't do much in the offseason. Basically, all they did was add two relievers in Dave Robertson and Kirby Yates. Um, and they just added Michael Lorenzen, reportedly, to a one-year deal. That's going to help them out of the gate with, with some of their pitching rotation. Um, I'm not going to say issues, but they do have three starters heading into the season that you probably won't see until the second half of the year. So that's the advantage that, that Chris Young, who's their GM, has, is that he's already made three trades without having to give anything up. He's got Scherzer at some point coming off of his back issue. He's got Tyler Molly, who's coming off of a Tommy John and could certainly help them out. And then we don't know what we're going to see out of Jacob DeGrom, but you're going to see him at some point. And to have those three guys help you maybe the last two plus months of the year and then for another October run, that's an advantage that no other team will have this year. Um, so I think that the, and listen, the Giants kind of have that too with Robbie Ray and Alex Cobb sitting in the holster. And I just saw that Cobb is starting to throw a little bit more and ramp things up, which is great. So those are two teams that have guys coming that, are going to really help. and um, But that's the reason we haven't really talked much about the Rangers is they didn't really change their team. They're very much running it back. God, Jacob DeGrom. I'm just thinking about him. What One of those, like, what if they stayed healthy? And he, even when he was healthy for those two Cy Young years, four-time All-Star, like, <sighs> probably not a Hall of Famer, right? Like, if his career ended today, he's kind of on that fringe. Like, I, his stuff was so dominant that I feel like at, for a four-year stretch, I could say he was the best pitcher in baseball. For me, that's enough for the Hall of Fame. But for so does Lindsay come get in? Because he has more God. postseason accolades than him. Oh, right? see, right? That's you know so what I mean? Tough. Like, because I agree with your four-year stretch thing. I don't know. Well, it's going to be hard. I mean, he's already thirty-five years old. He's going to turn thirty-six this summer. Just give me a guess, and I know that that we don't value wins, right? I get it. Yeah, Just give me. a Guess how many wins he's got in his career. 145. I'm going to guess less than 100. 84. Are you kidding me? 84. Now, his, you know he's won almost 60% of his decisions. And in his career, he has 1,652 strikeouts. So let's assume he does pitch another five years and he can boost that number by... Another eight hundred to a thousand, depending on how he's feeling and stuff like that in his career. Like his twenty five hundred strikeouts and low a hundred wins, but pure dominance for five years enough to get him in the Hall of Fame. I think it certainly helps that he pitched, you know, the decade in New York. Um, you know, two Cy Youngs, a rookie of the year another third place finish, three more top tens. If he can get back and get like one or two more where he gets in the top five, then I think you're talking about something, but he's got to return to that form. Chris Rose. Oh, sorry about that, Chris. Uh, we appreciate the time and you're so Thanks, good. Buddy. You're so good Absolutely. to us. Thank you for taking all this time. I know the show. Hey thing. It's kind of like, uh, like, uh,